On the day after their wedding, Daenerys Targaryen and his Dar Zolorak were escorted by procession to the Colosseum called Dasnak's Pit to celebrate its royal reopening. There, Danny's lost dragon Drogon would return and she would mount him for the first time in the series. What would follow would be one of the largest mass casualty events involving dragons since the treasons of Tumbleton. All of the fighting pits in Marine had been closed by the queen after she became ruler of the city. Daenerys had determined that the fighting pits contributed nothing of value to the new society she was designing. The fighting pits were the places where audience went for the sole purpose of seeing people die. The few that survived their fights would acquire a level of fame. There are notable pit fighters such as Barsena Blackhair, Bellico Bonebreaker, and Strong Belwas. Combatants in the pits weren't always willing. Slaves were often forced to participate, some of them being very young children. Animals were also made to take part in the butchery. Their deaths would be agonizing, much to the amusement of the bloodthirsty crowd. Nobleman Hisdar Zolorak, an owner of many of the fighting pits, requested on multiple occasions for Queen Daenerys to reopen the pits. She denied him every time, but he remained persistent, his arguments eloquent and never changing. Quote, The fighting pits have been part of Marine since the city was founded. The combats are profoundly religious in nature, a blood sacrifice to the gods of Gis. The mortal art of Gis is not mere butchery, but a display of courage, skill, and strength. The pits are far famed across the world. They draw trade to Marine and fill the city's coffers with coin from the ends of the earth. All men share a taste for blood, a taste the pits help slake. In that way, they make Marine more tranquil. For criminals condemned to die upon the sands, the pits represent a judgment by battle, a last chance for a man to prove his innocence." End quote. Daenerys remained firm in her decision until many of her own freed people, some of them famous former pit fighters themselves, began to side with the nobleman Hisdar. They too wanted the fighting pits reopened. They argued that if the queen gave them the freedom to live on their own terms, they should be free to die on their own terms. So as part of her marriage pact with the noble Hisdar, Daenerys allowed that he would be able to reopen the fighting pits if he so desired. According to Daenerys, quote, she cannot make her people good. She should at least try to make them less bad. End quote. That is because Daenerys believes she alone knows what's good. The sky was a merciless blue on the day of the reopening with only a hint of clouds in the sky. The heat was scorching when Queen Daenerys and King Consort Hisdar Zolorak arrived for the fighting. The entrance to Dasnak's pit is known as the Gates of Fate. Two towering brown statues, one holding a sword, the other an axe, form its archway. Much like the Roman Colosseum of our real world, Dasnak's pit is a somewhat circular brick arena with the seating arranged in descending tiers. Each tier is painted a specific color. The tier furthest from the fighting are colored black and purple. The closest are red and orange. As the queen and king of marine, Daenerys and Hisdar's viewing box fronted right upon the scarlet sands, giving them a perfect view of the bloodshed to come. In the crowd were many of Daenerys' allies and enemies. The graces including the green grace herself, Galaza Galari, the great masters of marine on the red and orange benches, Hisdar's kin of the ancient line of Lorak, and those of the House of Paul. Envoys from Yunkai, each of them with his slaves and servants, Miranese of lesser birth filled the upper tiers. The black and purple benches were crowded with freedmen and other common folk. Cell swords had been placed there as well, the likes of Brown Ben Plum and Bloodbeard. In the beginning, the entertainment went according to plan. Famous fighters like Cross and the Spotted Cat won quick victories over their foes. There was a mock Kalasar that performed poorly, much to the horror of Danny's handmaids. The last battle before the tragedy was a fight between Barsena Blackhair and a wild boar. What was supposed to be an easy win 
went horribly wrong. With razor sharp tusks, the boar gored her. The crowds could do nothing but watch as the beast began to eat Barsena's entrails. It was at that moment Daenerys determined she had seen enough. She took off her tokar and requested Sir Barristan escort her back to her pyramid's gardens, all while ignoring pleas from her new husband to stay. It was also at that moment the dragon descended and a hush fell across the crowd. Daenerys is the mother of three dragons, Viserion, Rhaegal, and Drogon. Drogon, her largest and most violent dragon, was recently accused of killing and devouring the daughter of a shepherd. Her name had been Hosea. In response, Daenerys attempted to have her dragons imprisoned in a great pit beneath her pyramid. Viserion and Rhaegal were successfully captured, only injuring several Unsullied in the process. During the attempt to chain Drogon, 40 of the Queen's men were burned. Four died from their wounds. This stands in stark contrast with the events of the show. On the show, Daenerys leads Viserion and Rhaegal into the pit herself with no difficulty. Drogon flies away from the city before he can be captured. No one is harmed. No one dies. The show made the dragons less dangerous, less lethal than they are in the books. Which brings us back to the disaster in Daznak's pit. The crowd watched in silence as the black and red dragon flew over the scarlet sands. It shot a lance of black fire at the boar, killing it. The dragon landed to feed on the corpses of both boar and woman alike. Many audience members fled at this point. Many and more stayed behind. This is where the carnage begins. Drogon killed a would-be dragon slayer and several attendants in the pit. Daenerys leapt into the pit, grabbed a whip, and beat Drogon into submission. She then mounted him for the first time. The dragon took to the air, sweeping black wings over bronze statues to soar out and over the city of Marine. There was a great loss of life the day Daenerys took to the sky for the first time. The aftermath of this dragon flight we first learned from Sir Barristan. Quote, Beyond the gates had been a solid press of people. Maddened by the smell of dragon, horses below reared in terror, lashing out with iron-shod hooves. Foodstalls and palanquins alike were overturned, men knocked down and trampled, spears were thrown, crossbows were fired, some struck home. The dragon twisted violently in the air, wounds smoking, the girl clinging to his back. Then he loosed the fire. It had taken the rest of the day and most of the night for the brazen beast to gather up the corpses. The final count was 214 slain, three times as many burned or wounded. End quote. In a matter of moments, a dragon, not even fully grown, barely large enough to bear the weight of its rider, killed over 200 people and wounded many more. Out on the Dothraki Sea, Daenerys could not remember everything that happened as she flew upon the dragon, but she does remember a few key horrific details. Quote, The fire burned away my hair, but elsewise it did not touch me. It had been the same in Daznak's pit. That much she could recall, though much of what followed was a haze. So many people screaming and shoving. She remembered rearing horses, a food cart spilling melons as it overturned, from below, a spear came flying, followed by a flight of crossbow bolts. One passed so close that Danny felt it brush her cheek. Others skittered off Drogon's scales, lodged between them or tore through the membrane of his wings. She remembered the dragon twisting beneath her, shuddering at the impacts as she tried desperately to cling to his scaled back. The wounds were smoking. Danny saw one of the bolts burst into sudden flame. Another fell away, shaken loose by the beating of his wings. Below, she saw men whirling, wreathed in flame, hands up in the air as if caught in the throes of some mad dance. A woman in a green tokar reached for a weeping child, pulling him down into her arms to shield him from the flames. Danny saw the color vividly, but not the woman's face. People were stepping on her as they lay tangled on the bricks. Some were on fire. 
End quote. In the crowd of people outside of Daznak's walls, there were no doubt Marinese of all ranks from all walks of life. Danny's own freedmen, merchants, guardsmen, soldiers, animal herders, a great mix of people. Many of them left the market wounded that day. More of them are now dead, consumed in a cloud of black and red dragon fire. Among the dead was a child wrapped in their mother's arms. The death of one child was enough for Daenerys to chain her dragons so that no other innocent could come to such a fate. But after the desolation at Daznax, after witnessing a child burned to death by her own dragon's fire, Daenerys thinks to herself this, quote, up and up and up he'd borne her, high above the pyramids and pits, his wings outstretched to catch the warm air rising from the city's sun-baked bricks. If I fall and die, it would still have been worth it, she thought. End quote. Daenerys did not order her dragon to kill those people. There was no utterance of Dracarys. The dragon was defending itself and its mother. But when it comes to the needless loss of life, the unique magical experience of riding a dragon for the first time does not make it worth it. Today marks the six year anniversary of the episode Dance of Dragons, the episode of Game of Thrones in which Daenerys mounted Drogon for the first time. As you can see, the events on the show do not match the events of the book at all. The show presents a much more sanitized version of Danny's first ride. The only people in the crowd killing innocents are Danny's enemies, the Sons of the Harpy. Drogon arrives to heroically defend his mother. Daenerys does not need to beat him into submission with the whip, the weapon of the slavers she so despises. She needs only to remove the spear from his side before he lets her ride. It leads me to wonder, if the show had adapted Danny's first dragon flight as it appears in the books, if they presented the dragons as the lethal creatures they are, would her turn in the final season have been more believable? What reason did the show have for not including the disaster at Daznak's pit? Was it the budget, time constraints, some other technical issue? Or was the disaster just one of the many other signs of what's to come for Daenerys' character? Perhaps the writers thought if they showed Daenerys on a dragon with the dragon burning a crowd of innocent people, what they planned for the Bells would not be the shocking moment they wanted it to be. Why else turn this moment into a triumph and not present it as it was? The disaster at Daznak's pit was a tragedy.